This is Math Minutes with Mr. White. Hey, thanks for joining me for a quick discussion on how to add and subtract radicals. It's really as simple as combining like terms. You remember doing that in Algebra 1 class. Well, you can do it here with radicals. Let me explain how. As we begin our journey on understanding how to add and subtract radicals, let's start with something we know. The square root of 9. The square root of 9 is, of course, 3. And the square root of 9 plus the square root of 9 would be the same thing as 3 plus 3, which we all know is 6. So I'll ask you this. Is that the same thing as the square root of 18? If you type the square root of 18 into your calculator, I can guarantee it's not going to say 6. So you cannot add 9 plus 9 and get 18 here. Square root of 9 plus square root of 9 is not the same thing as the square root of 18. Something I wanted you to realize right off the bat here. Returning back to the statement radical 9 plus radical 9. What if we were to think about x plus x, some number plus itself? Now those are called like terms, and we get 2x when we add them together. Much like when we added 3 plus 3, we got two of those, and that was 6. We can think about radical 9 plus radical 9 as being 2 times the square root of 9, which of course is 2 times 3, which is 6. So radical 9 plus radical 9 is the same thing as 2 radical 9. Now what about a radical that is not a perfect square, like radical 7? That's called an irrational number. So we're taking an irrational number plus another irrational number. Well, radical 7 plus radical 7 is simply going to be 2 radical 7, and that is what we call simplest form here. Moving on to 4x plus 3x, these are like terms, and of course, you learned in, in pre-algebra that when you take 4x plus 3x, you get 7x. What happens if you have four radical 7s and then you add three more radical 7s? Well, it's obvious. You simply get 7 radical 7. Let's do a subtraction problem, even though it's just the same as adding a negative. 8 radical 5 minus 3 radical 5. You see, these are like terms. They're both radical 5. So 8 of these radical 5s take away 3 is going to give you 5 of these radical 5s. Now, I would love for you to see that you could also do the distributed property and factor out the radical 5. That leaves behind 8 minus 3. 8 minus 3, of course, is 5. The 8 minus 3 gave me the 5, which just reiterates that 8 radical 5 take away 3 radical 5 is 5 radical 5 any way you think about it. You can think about this distributed property method or you can think about the like term method. Personally, I like the like terms. Take a look at the screen now. We've got 7x plus 2y. Now these are not like terms. So what can we do with it? Absolutely nothing. This is already simplified. So it was a trick question. So if I gave you 7 radical 3 and then someone brought in 2 radical 5 and we want to add it all up, what can we do to simplify all this? Absolutely nothing. It is already simplified. I need you to remember that you, you do not get radical 8 here, just like we didn't get radical 18 at the beginning of this video. 7 radical 3 plus 2 radical 5 is the simplest form. Let's add and subtract a few different terms here. We have 3 radical 2 plus 4 radical 5 minus 4 radical 2. Scan through that. We have three terms, and two of them are what I would call like terms. They are radical 2s. So I'm going to bring down that 4 radical 5, and then I'm going to go ahead and combine the radical 2 terms, and I get negative 1 radical 2. Of course, I don't have to write the, uh, the 1 in front. And then just realize that those are not like terms. Those are not like terms, so that is the answer. I'm going to go ahead and put a box around it. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, now, I remember my math teacher doing some crazy math voodoo and being able to do something like over here where the radicals don't match, but yet... Your teacher was able to combine it somehow. Well, let me go through this. The square root of 8, that's a radical that can be simplified. It is the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. And the square root of 4 is 2, so 2 radical 2 plus 3 radical 2. Now let's add the radicals together. 2 radical 2 plus 3 radical 2, that makes 5 radical 2. So we were able to combine the two radicals because there was the square root of 2 hiding within the square root of 8. So you need to simplify first, get everything fully simplified, look for like terms, and then add and subtract them. It's as simple as that. Let's give it a try on another problem. Let's do one more example. Now these two radicals, bear with me, they look radically different, don't they? We have radical 12 
minus 2 radical 75. They seem very different. So let's go ahead and simplify them and see. Take a look at the number 12. It splits into 4 and 3. And 4 is a perfect square, so we get 2 radical 3 when we're talking about that square root of 12. Now looking at the radical 75, I, I recognize that 75 has 25 in it, and 25 is a perfect square. So I'm going to split it up into radical 25 times 3. Now don't forget about that 2 that was out front as a coefficient. I'll bring that down. And then radical 25 simplifies to be 5, and then 2 times 5 is 10. So now we have a new problem on our hands. Now that everything is simplified, 2 radical 3 minus 10 radical 3, and you see the answer is negative 8 radical 3. Well, there you go. Adding and subtracting radicals wasn't so bad. It really is just like like terms. Now, sometimes you have to work a little extra magic, but it wasn't so hard. Now, if you need a little more practice on simplifying radicals, I have posted another video uh, that focuses entirely on simplifying radicals and getting things out of the radical. So hopefully you find that helpful. Now, I sure hope you like this video. You subscribe to the channel if you found this useful. Also, leave your comments down below. I really enjoy hearing how you're doing with all this crazy math stuff. All right, until next time. This has been another edition of Math Minutes with Mr. White.